Prem Narayanan. Uh, I am an endocrinologist working as assistant professor in uh, Department of Endocrinology, Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences, Cochin. Uh, so, the today the topic which I would like to discuss is about uh, the pragmatic selection of cooking oils in diabetes. We all know that uh, uh, the diabetes is a very important uh, epidemic that is happening in our country and the numbers are rising like anything and the role of diet in diabetes is very, very important. Especially so, uh, with the diabetes we know that uh, that's micro and macrovascular complications. So, basically it is a disease that affects the blood vessels. Uh. So, uh, the role of cooking oils, because oils are the major fat and, there is a fat and fat is one of the major macronutrients that we consume in our daily diet. And uh, uh, the oils are the most important source of the fat that we take in our daily diet. And uh, so, the oils you can uh, put it like, uh, uh, oils are mainly it contains, uh, uh, the fat that contains oils is the triacyl glycerols. That is, there is a backbone of the glycerol on which three fatty acids are fit into it. And fats can be, I mean the oils, uh, the fatty acids are fit into it and the fatty acids can be divided into saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. So, we will know about that. So, saturated fatty acids are the fatty acids where the carbon to carbon only single bones are present in the molecule. And unsaturated fatty acids are fatty acids where there are carbon to carbon double bones are present. When, the, when there is a, only a single double bond, it is called mono unsaturated fatty acid and when there are there is one or more there is more than one it is called a poly unsaturated fatty acids so these are the classification of the fatty acids and apart from this there is another fat which is called the trans fats these trans fats are very important because they are very notorious for the risk of the cardiovascular diseases how from where do we get the trans fats mainly the trans fats we get is from the partially hydrogenated vegetable oils that we consume you know, daily life and uh, this the importance of trans fat is that it is metabolized in the liver it is not regulated by insulin and it does not induce glycogen formation in the daily life we get the trans fat the contributions are mainly from the cakes pastries cookies that we consume the cornets or the uh, chips that we consume then uh, fried potato chips and also the um, uh, popcorn these are all the major source of trans fats that we consume and these trans fats, because of their uh, position of the side chain molecules, it almost behaves like a saturated fat. That is, it will be linear in the uh, uh, structure. So, that is why it is most important and it can lead to, it is not at all a heart healthy molecule. And uh, we also get trans fats from the uh, animal fats also, from the animals, ruminants like the cow, sheep, goat and all. They are from there, we get the animal trans fats. And uh, there was a survey which was conducted in 2007-8 in uh, India which showed that the uh, uh, Punjab, Chandigarh, Haryana and Delhi had the highest, were uh, the highest consumers of trans fats and most of them, uh, the highest consumers and most of them came from the partially hydrogenated vegetable oils. Uh, from my state, Kerala was lower down, but from my state, the, the, it was the second largest consumer of trans fats from the animals uh, after the Jammu and Kashmir. So, these are the uh, trans fat data. So, it is very important that trans fats are not at all uh, healthy for our body. And uh, next, uh, uh, we mo move on. So, there is, uh, as we have said, various oils. And where there is oils and the fats, we, we know there is a link between the cardiovascular disease. Uh, there is the increase of coronary heart disease. There was a uh, hypothesis that a diet heart hypothesis, which was, uh, the concept was put forward by Dr. Ansel Keys in 1956, where he published a study called uh, Seven Countries Study which showed that established the link between the dietary fat and the uh, risk of the coronary heart, uh, coronary heart disease. So, uh, this that was the platform when the saturated fats as a notorious agent came into the picture. And uh, we all know that uh, uh, this diet heart, after the uh, diet heart hypothesis, this uh, uh, the usage of the uh, saturated fats came down and there are other uh, studies where there was there are four uh, main studies where the core trials were the replacement of saturated fats with a polyunsaturated fat showed that there is a decrease in the coronary heart disease risk. So that was the platform where it, the oils uh, about the concept of the unsaturated fatty acid oils were brought into the picture. 
and uh, we all know that we all consume different types of oils daily because pan India if you see there are different types of oils which are being used across the country. From my city you will know that the uh, coconut oil is one of the major uh, uh, oil that is consumed by the state and uh, uh, as said the saturated fat and the coronary artery disease risk and uh, the, in other, uh, the estimates of CVD prevalence in Kerala and, uh, was almost comparable to that of the global and also the high income country group. And uh, previously saturated fats uh, like the coconut oil was considered to be one of the major factor for that increased risk of CHD in Kerala. But recently there were studies which could not prove the causation risk but definitely I would say that the coconut oil will definitely increase the LDL cholesterol level. The recently published circulation journal last month article showed that uh, uh, coconut oil consumption increased the LDL cholesterol by 10 milligram per deciliter and also the HDL by 4 milligram per deciliter and uh, the, it also increased, increased the risk of the coronary heart disease. So that was about the coconut oil. Then, then other oils which are being used are also the, uh, the commonly uh, in our country that we use is a palm oil is very uh, commonly used. This is a saturated oil and uh, the palm oil is a, it has long chain fatty acid unlike the coconut oil which has medium chain fatty acids uh, palm oil contains long chain fatty acids which are considered to be more uh, uh, harmful to our body can, can, uh, can, I mean, uh, comparing it with the uh, uh, coconut oil. Then other uh, is the other oil which is used is a vanaspadi you know it is basically a hydrogenated fat and you know the vanaspadi contains around 53 percentage of the trans fat content is present. So uh, as we have already said that trans fats are notorious so vanaspadi can a high amount of trans fats and hence the usage of vanaspadi should be brought down definitely. And the other oils that are being consumed are the mustard oil and the canola oil. Mustard oil and canola oil they contain more of a monounsaturated fatty acids and uh, uh, then other oils consumed are the olive oil again monounsaturated fatty oils. Then groundnut oil also contains a good amount of monounsaturated fatty acids of around 50 percentage. Then sesame seed oil uh, in Hindi what we call the thilka tail. Uh, the sesame seed oil is also there which contains an uh, almost a proportionate amount of the saturated and the uh, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids. So these are major uh, uh, I mean uh, description about the fatty acid components in the oil. And the next important thing in the oils is that oils are prone for oxidation. So lipids we know that lipids are prone for oxidation so like that oils are prone for oxidation. The major type of oxidation that occurs is the auto oxidation. Auto oxidation means you do not do anything you keep the oil just into the uh, openly in the air it will start auto oxidation. It is mainly via the free radical mechanism and it depends the auto oxidation depends on the degree of unsaturation, temperature and the oxidative stability of the oils. And uh, uh, then other oxidation is the photo oxidation that is if you keep the uh, 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 oils in light like in the transparent plastic bottles and all that increases the risk of oxidation. Then the third is a lipo oxygenase catalyzed oxidation that is the rice bran and canola rice bran sorry rice bran and soybean oil these two oils these seeds contain high amount of lipooxygenase. So these are prone for uh, uh, lipooxygenase mediated uh, oxidation even during the stage of processing itself. You know that uh, do you know that uh, uh, processing of oils is a tedious process where it many uh, uh, it goes through many pathways uh, and first uh, mainly the screw press after the screw press is what we get a virgin oil. So you know, would have heard about a virgin oil also, also known as a raw oil or the uh, cold pressed oils all these virgin oils the thing is that they are not refined because usually what happens is that the, what we get in supermarkets is refined oils. Uh, refined oils uh, means uh, these virgin oils they will be further refined bleached deodorized and hydrogenated before it reaches the supermarket. So the virgin oils are unrefined. The advantage is that by refinement we lose the antioxidants in these oils and that leads to less oxidative stability of the oils. Uh. Virgin oils are good in that aspect that uh, they do not lose the antioxidants and hence their stability is more compared to the refined oils. And but the smoke point of uh, 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 vir, I mean uh, refined or virgin oils are low. So the uh, virgin oils they should not be subjected to very high temperatures. They should be used for processes like uh, salad dressings uh, or low temperature cooking or for flavoring. So this is about the virgin oils and. Uh, uh, Next uh, we move on to uh, from the refinement process you all know uh, the uh, because all these are important because the oxidation can lead it can lead to harmful effects because it the oil loses its nutritive value 
oil loses its you uh, loses its shelf life the oil uh, the oxidized oil they are prone for uh, uh, mutagenic uh, then cytotoxic and carcinogenic risk will be there and it can also damage the various mem membrane proteins and enzymes also and next we move on to another process oils we all know that uh, rather than keep taking it raw we mainly use it for frying purpose frying is a process where the oil is subjected to very high temperature of 150 to 190 degrees celsius and uh, in the presence of air and moisture so this fried frying leads to uh, process uh, three uh, then the oil is uh, used for frying three processes it undergoes hydrolysis polymerization and oxidation this results in a various array of products like the acrolein polar compounds and all other uh, epoxides uh, aldehydes uh, ketones and all these products so this can lead to uh, we are consuming uh, the uh, uh, reused oils when the oil is being reused many times what happens is that if you consume this type of oil, all these uh, uh, secondary products of uh, will and uh, will be enter our body and that can lead to oxidative endothelial stress leading to increased risk of atherosclerosis and hypertension so that is uh, most important reused oils should not be used because you know that uh, after a fr a single fry itself uh, you will be seeing black particles sedimenting under the uh, oils so these are the secondary products that happens after frying in hotels or uh, many uh, uh, shops we know that uh, uh, they keep on using the reusing the oils uh, so that will lead to increased risk for our many other diseases so reused uh, or reusing of oils should not be done and uh, next uh, we from the uh, process of frying so there are many studies which showed that the uh, st uh, oxidative stability of oils at uh, various temperatures and also at uh, high temperatures for uh, prolonged exposure it showed that uh, the virgin olive oil extra virgin and uh, just uh, the normal uh, un i mean refined olive oil and the avocado oil these oils the uh, uh, trans fat formation was dependent on temperature and and not the exposure to heat while the refined oils that we use that is the uh, sunflower oil there is a mustard oil groundnut oil all these refined oils that we use the trans fat formation is depend on the heat exposure rather than the temperature so there is a varying uh, effects that we give, uh, get it from uh, different oils after uh, uh, using it for frying and uh, there are various other uh, studies that is the most important we know about olive oil olive oil is one oil uh, with the most important content of that is a mono unsaturated fatty acids and olive oils can uh, there are studies which showed that it can increase the uh, blood lipid profile and also the uh, glycemic parameters also and uh, recently also from my institute one unpublished data uh, which showed that uh, olive oil uh, compared to the uh, sunflower and also the coconut oil olive oil uh, improved the uh, parameters of uh, glycemia and also it the uh, it uh, olive oil improved the anti inflammatory markers rather than the pro inflammatory markers so that was a benefit that which was uh, obtained from the olive oil so before concluding so there are a lot of controversies about uh, uh, the usage of uh, oils and the saturated fats so are saturated fats uh, really harmful saturated fats uh, it should uh, are definitely it should be used in moderation amount only as uh, usually 7 to 10% is uh, calorie um, daily intake can be uh, considered by saturated fats and uh, uh, coconut oil if you ask is coconut oil healthy yes definitely it is good only because uh, uh, there are various benefits also and there are certain disadvantage also so the, so the increased risk of ldl uh, but it, it it has not so far been proven that uh, uh, this increase in ldl is uh, resulting in increased risk of coronary heart disease and uh, uh, apart uh, from that uh, uh, then uh, other uh, 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 problems will be the reusing of oils and adulteration which is, should be definitely monitored into and uh, before concluding uh, the conclusion of marks one would be least oil is the best and never reuse any oil it is always harmful and uh, trans fats are definitely not heart healthy and use oils um, saturated fats in moderate amount only thank you